and he goes, darn him, sold me a hot guitar. Well, anyway, um, they're like, why is the case wrapped like this in tape? And he explains to him that the case had fallen apart at such a time that he did not have the ability to go get a new case that he had a flight to catch and he wasn't, you know, he'd miss his flight if he had gotten a new case. And so he was just trying to make sure it wouldn't come apart and they tell him, well, sir, uh, drug smugglers do that. And the drug dog hit on this, so we need to open this case and we need you here in the event that there is anything in there. He's like, well, if there's stuff in there, I didn't put it in it. So they open up, the, they unwrap this guitar case, open it up, and the dog hit, I don't know how many of you are musicians, but in most electric guitar cases, there is a little box under the neck that opens up, and it's where you can put your picks, capos, and tuner pick box. And the dog was going nuts on this pick box. And they go, well, that's where it was, but there's nothing in there, obviously. So he was free to go, but I thought that that was a, a rather comical story from uh, Dad's days of running a music store. When I, either before I was born or when I was a very young child. Um, another funny one is he had worked with this guy for a while. He was one of the, the guys that did some of the more advanced electronics diagnostics in his shop. Amps that came in that didn't work, uh, switches needing replacing, things like that. Um, so, they were getting ready to go out to lunch. Uh, my mother at the time had a full-time job. And I don't know if I was born at the time of this story yet or not. Older folks will remember this ad. Uh, Wendy's at the time, their big thing was where's the beef? So my dad, he's like, what do you want for lunch? I'll buy. He goes, oh, I don't care. You pick. He's like, well, I'm kind of feeling a Wendy's burger and a bowl of chili. He goes, oh, I don't go to Wendy's. They always get that order wrong. I can't stand that darn place. Da, 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 da. Dad's like, no, I'll make sure they get it right. I'll double check everything before I leave and yada, yada, yada. Make sure that you get what you order. Okay, fine. So my dad goes to Wendy's and gives incredibly specific instructions. How this burger, he gets the burger dressed however this guy wanted, you know, with, with or without whatever condiments or toppings. But he tells them to cook the beef and the cheese, but to wrap them in a separate wax paper and not put them on the burger. Finishes the order out, double checks everything when it comes to him. It is exactly what my dad ordered. And he... Uh, goes back to the store. The guy's been sitting there. Working away. Hands him his burger. Whatever else he got. My dad has obviously the beef and cheese out of his burger and so he's got a salad sandwich. Guy takes one bite of it and proceeds to say, and I quote my dad on this, this blanker's cold. Opens it up starts cussing even more because there is no beef in or cheese in his cheeseburger. So, I'm dating my father here. Uh, he proceeds to grab the closest phone book and start thumbing through in a fit of fury. My dad reaches in the bag, pulls out 
a piece of wax paper, the piece of wax paper that has the cheese and the beef in it and goes, hey, here's the beef. <laughs> to which my dad got a chuckle and some more profanity aimed at him, all in good, clean fun. Uh, but that was one of the, that was a couple of the stories that I thought were, were interesting. And I guess part of the reason why I'm sharing these are, would be that, uh, dad died a few years back. Uh, stage four colon cancer. We had no forewarning of it due to his, due to some other medical problems that he had. Uh, traditional medicine held out little hope because if the cancer didn't kill him. Traditional medicines such as chemo and radiation surely would due to pre-existing medical conditions. Well, I've always wanted to try to find a way to keep some of the more memorable stories that I know about alive. And I think that this is a way to do it. And he was such a a decent man. A uh, very kind-hearted, very very easy to talk to and get along with um, up till he got sick. Really sick. I would call him every day on my way into work and we would talk for anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes during my work commute. So it was always just a, a real treat and due to his work schedule he could make and take phone calls as he saw fit. A lot of his work was on the telephone so it wasn't a big deal for him to be on the phone not working for a little while because he always had something lined up in the pipeline, a next phone call to make or another phone call scheduled coming in. But I remember he and I used to talk on the phone quite a bit while I was driving. But I figured that uh, it would be an interesting way to try to preserve some of the more interesting of those stories. Anyway, um, oh, what the heck, one more. So... My dad, when he was in high school, was, and this is surprising considering he worked in the world of sales the entire time I was around, rather shy. To that end, he was a bit of a shutter bug. He took a lot of pictures back then, and he also had his own dark room in the house that he grew up in so he could develop his own film. Kids, you have no idea what I'm talking about. I don't care. He used to have to take pictures and wait to find out if they were any good. Not tap the gallery button and scroll back through and, oh, that's so cute. No, you had to wait and do stuff. Well, anyway, since my dad was such a shutterbug when he was in high school, that got him on the high school yearbook committee for his graduating year. I just see a buddy of mine in his project car. Maybe not. Anyway, um, there was one of his classmates that every year, or that every day, would park his car in the very front row of the high school parking lot, which is fine. But he had a... Hey, this was in 1975, I think, when Dad graduated. So, 74, 75. Um, he had a 1969 327 Camaro. I am not a GM man, but I can decidedly appreciate that. That's a very cool car. And because he had that, he would take up three parking spots in the front row. My dad said, look, if you want to park up front, that's fine. If you want to take up three spots, that's fine. Do it in the back, but don't do both. 
So, my dad never voiced his opinion to this gentleman about it. So, to make sure that he stopped doing this, um, when it was 15 to 20 degrees out this winter, my dad threw a garden hose in the trunk of his car. He was on the yearbook committee. He could get out of anything. As long as he kept his grades good. So he badges out of this specific class to go take pictures. Goes to his car, gets in the trunk, grabs the garden hose, hooks up to the side of the gym, and proceeds to put about three four inches of ice all over this dude's car. Has it set on mist, just spraying away, and make sure he freezes the tires to the ground really good. And this guy comes out and goes, oh, my car! Oh. And he had a date this weekend, so he ends up having to take his dad's work truck on a date because it took this car a solid several, it didn't unthaw till the following week. Or it didn't thaw out till the following week. So, it was a, it was a prank that just kept on giving. And my dad was going to come clean at his 30th high school reunion, but the dude never showed. So, uh, that was one that, <laughs> that dad took with him. But, uh, that just kind of gives you an idea of the kind of mischief that he could get up to. Anyway, I'm getting close to work. Be posting these videos later. By the way, I do apologize for the edit in one video. I gave away a name I shouldn't have. Uh, or that I don't really want to because I do want to keep some semblance of internet privacy. And y'all called me Big Smooth. All my coworkers do. Even when I'm not at work. So... Anyway, hope y'all have a good rest of your day, and I'll be posting more tomorrow.